Yesterday's legislature assembly dispersed thousands of dollars in the approved civilist amendment of the Act to members of Parliament, Cabinet, Speaker of the House, as well as the amendment of the new consumption tax and the income tax. With the proposal to improve working remuneration for workers on the island, Cabinet approved the salary increase for those earning 20,000 and below 20,000 by 15 percent and those above by 10 percent. Not only were the public sermons remuneration endorsed, but so did the old folks' pension. They have received an increase of approximately $30 a fortnight. The change increased from 5200 to $5,980. The disability benefit stays at $2,210 a year and any other case $1,950 a year. However, the most prominent change yesterday to the civil list has also questioned where funds will establish from to action the huge increase. The changes will see Premier's remuneration increase from $60,803 to $75,055. Ministers increased from $39,315 to $51,009. Members assisting a minister increased from $16,686 to $39,359. Members of Parliament will increase from 16,686 to 26,179. The Speaker of the House increased from $20,251 to $30,731. Other changes expected to action in the near future is the taxes that will include a $2,000 income rebate for those outside of government earning $20,000 or less. The Niue Consumption Tax Amendment Bill also amended for the reduction of the Niue Consumption Tax Registration Threshold from $200,000 to $75,000. We're not able to clarify as to when the implementation of the increase will be, but Honourable Premier Tokitalangi had advised in an interview with BCN News that he would like a change implemented before Christmas. As the fourth high-level forum on aid effectiveness got underway in the southern Korea city of Busan, Pacific Island Forum countries shared their positive national and regional experiences as well as remaining challenges in development coordination during their thematic sessions on lessons learned over the past six years. In his contribution from the floor on the thematic session covering aid predictability and transparency, Niwe's only delegate to the meeting is Honorable Kupa Mangatomungia. He said countries in the Pacific region have over the past five years increased their efforts to integrate and reflect aid on their national budgets. He said while a step in the right direction, our efforts in this area are being hampered by lack of transparency and availability of complete and timely information from some of the development partners and from government line ministries. Honorable Mantongia said this is particularly problematic in some smaller island states with a high reliance on development assistance where donor funds contribute to more than 50% of their national budget. Aid, predictability or the lack of it affects government's ability for forward and annual national planning budgeting and ultimately the implementation of national development priorities. Honorable Mahatungia told the meeting new government supports the commitments made in the draft Busan outcomes document their course on development partners to deliver on their promises in Paris and Accra for more timely and accurate and transparent information on all aid provided and forward estimates for each country. Niue further supports the provision of timelines for delivery on these commitments. Honorable Mahatongia said that the Niue government is committed to this and will work with its development partners 
to set and monitor national targets on aid predictability by the end of 2012. Yesterday, youngsters at Early Childhood Education and New York Primary School took on board the Blue Light Experience that was organized by the New York Police in partnership with New York Fire Department. We send our year's program student reporter Katrina Milikitama to find out more. The Blue Light Experience was established in 2000 to work with young people from both schools for the New York Primary School. The fun half day of sports, activities, refreshments, is an event held at least once a year as an approach to work with the community, building confidence and safety. Well, the purpose is get to know, getting to know um, students in Neo Primary and also the teachers. Um, we can also host it at um, Neo High School so that when they have answers for Neo Police um, in relation to what we do and um, during our daily, daily work in uh, Neo Police and also um, Neo Fire, um, I, would, I would like to encourage them to like uh, join in. Like if we happen to have our program running at New York Primary Commercial Centre, they should just um, have the confidence to approach us so that whatever they don't know, they can ask us. And um, just encourage them to come up and talk to us. Judging by the turnout and reaction from students, it has been a major success, something for the kids to look forward to that is also a good wind down for the year. And that story was compiled by our student reporter, Katrina Milikitama. One of the only sporting groups to continue its drive to develop young persons' abilities in sports has included swimming lessons in its agenda to assist young school students from New Year Primary School. Tamamana Sports is wrapping up its swimming initiative tomorrow as the intermediate group of the program called the Penguins showed us how they how much they developed. According to Mrs. Shelley Chenery, the program has been welcomed by many. Well, we've started this program this year, so this is our se second term. Um, and what we've done with the, the seniors from the primary school, we've allocated them into groups according to their abilities. So we've got three groups going, your starfish, which are the children that we're looking to give a little bit more confidence to, um, and they're coming along really well. And then our second group is the penguins, so that's the children that have already come along with a lot of confidence in the water, but we're just refining their kicking and their arm strokes, so this is who this group is today. Um, and then our dolphins, so they're our children that are really good swimmers, so we're just really you know, um, correcting some of their arm strokes and their kicking and their breathing. Yeah, we do an assessment at the beginning of the term and just to see where they're at, whether they can float, what sort of confidence they have, etc. But even the kids that we've got currently, some of them have been put into the starfish group, but really they need to be reassessed next term because they've just improved out of sight. So we'll look at it again in the, you know, next year. Some of the penguins who took to the water today were more than happy to support the initiative. It's fun, like you get to teach and then learn and then you can do it outside. It's fun and also you can learn much about swimming and yeah, and to learn more. Is it easy to swim or is it, it, does it take a lot of your energy? Um, it starts hard from the beginning but when you get to the end you get, it gets easier. And, and you started this at the beginning of the year first term, eh? Yes. Have you seen much improvement in your swimming ability? Um, yeah, a little bit. It's fine also and learn how to swim. You're probably the smallest one here. Is it harder to uh, learn with the other kids? Quite. But you're pretty fast. Yeah. It's very nice and fun and we know how to swim when we practice. Will you be representing you at any sport, uh, any games in the future? Oh yeah. I think it's fun, it's great because you get to learn how to swim. Mm. Is this important to you? Yes, very. <laughs> and um, what do you, what do you want to tell the other young people who don't know how to swim? Uh, to learn swim so you can be safe around water. Mrs. Chenery would like to encourage volunteers to take up the worthy course for the development of young children on the island. The Tamamana Sports and Swimming Program would also like to thank all volunteers, especially the New Zealand High Commission, for the use of their swimming pool. Last Saturday, the New Air Golf Club Championship was held. 36 holes in eight hours challenged the finalists. 
the championship game have been played over the last month and all games were very close. In the open ladies category, Margaret Siosi Kefu defeated Christine Ioane and in the seniors, Sonia Tafatu defeated Lafarix. Senior men's division champ is Stanley Tafatu. Intermediate men's division went to Michael Jackson who defeated Langa Lavini. The juniors BJ Rix defeated Hayden Porter. Cash prizes will be distributed at the championship prize giving to be held on the 10th of December. That's our news bulletin for tonight. And for those of you who are about to head off for the festive holidays, have a pleasant one and we hope to see you back. Good evening. Thank you.